We are going to be knowing more from, uh, about it from Mr. Jesse Fivell. Mr. Jesse Fivell is a writer, speaker, trainer, innovative leader in the business of technology management. In addition to speaking for Agile, Scrum, and PMI conferences, he has collected a broad array of experience in several sectors, such as national security, aerospace, GIS, stock multimedia, telecom, hospitality. Recently, he founded the PMI Agile Community of Practice, PMI's component dedicated to Agile project management. A graduate of John Hopkins University, he is a certified project management professional and a certified Scrum trainer. I invite Mr. Jesse Fivell for his keynote address on Agile management. Uh, let's try this again. Can everybody hear me? Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Um, one more hand for Greg Ballestero and his amazing work over the, the, the administration that he's had promoting project management, growing the membership, growing PMPs. Uh, you stop to consider that there are over half a million constituents of the PMI between its members and the PMPs. That's quite a legacy to leave behind. Okay, so everyone has had their tea and their coffee, so you have the caffeine, and now you need the exercise. Okay? So I need everybody to stand up. A little bit of exercise to get us going. Everybody stand up. Okay, a project manager is a superhero. A project manager is a superhero. So we're going to put on our superhero costumes. Okay, everybody together. Superman. Okay, Spider-Man. Okay, Superman. Batman. Superman. Spider-Man. Batman. Superman. Spider-Man. Batman. Okay, quickly, quickly. Okay, here we go. Here's the test. Superman. Spider-Man. Batman. Superman. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Batman. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. My mom says, take pictures from India. <laughs> so now I have a good photo to bring back from India. Yes, I am Jesse Fuel. I am the founder of the PMI Agile uh, Community of Practice. I am the managing director for Ripalock India. I have shifted my family to India. Um, uh, from the United States, so I am the American living here, and it's my job to explain to you an entire industry in 30 minutes. I will do my best, and I will try to focus on the bottom line of what it is, project management. And to start off with, what we need is to talk about an agenda. So what is the agenda? What is the agenda? What is Agile Project Management? This is the technical part. This is the boring part. This is the part where you need to uh, focus and pay attention so that you can understand why should I care? This is the interesting part. This is the part that you will take away with. And then, why, how do I start? This is the practical part. The part where you can actually do something with this. Okay? So, let's spend a few minutes talking about the technical things and then we'll get into the stuff that matters. This is Tokyo. Tokyo um, is the single most expensive city in the world to live. Uh, when I was looking at becoming an expat, I started looking at comparisons of uh, cost of living, and, and Tokyo is at the top of the list. And you stop to think, why? how is that? How is that possible? Because if you were to take a look through time, um, there, uh, over the course of history, um, and compare the average income of a Japanese to the average income of a Brit or an American, then you would see that uh, the, the Japanese were steadily increasing all the way up until World War II and completely decimated, an entire country destroyed. And then, and then came lean thinking. Lean thinking transformed an economy that was destroyed, transformed an economy of a small community, a small island of, of people, into becoming um, just as affluent as the U.S. and the U.K. by the 80s and the 90s. And what we attribute this to is lean thinking. 
a revolution in management. And that revolution in management that aspired to removing waste. Removing waste. And, and what that did is that inspired a wave of process improvement um, over the course of the last 20 to 30 years. And we called it total quality management. We called it Six Sigma, ISO 9000, CMMI, removing waste, maximizing efficiencies. Because we know people are lazy, aren't they? And so it's our job as managers to make them not be lazy anymore. And so we invented all of these methodologies to kind of push people and push them forward. And then in the 90s, there were a group of thought leaders in IT who said, wait a minute, that's not really the spirit of what lean thinking was about. We want to talk about some lightweight methodologies. Some lightweight methodologies that allow us to be a little more flexible without the overhead. And these thought leaders got together in 2001 and they held a meeting uh, which produced a document that they called the Agile Manifesto. And the Agile Manifesto shared some common convictions about what it means to be successful on a project. And it goes something like this. To be successful, people matter more than process. Deliverables matter more than documentation. Collaboration matters more than contracts. And responding to change matters more than performing the plan. That's compelling. There's, there's, something, there's something about that, that that appeals to me, and, and yet there's something about it that annoys me. And I think what I've come to believe is that on the one side, we have the things that generate value. And on the other side, we have the things that are management controls. On the one side, we have the things that we are paid to do as project leaders and project implementation teams. But on the other side, we have the things that we are trained to do. If you go to PMP boot camp, if you go to MBA school, if you go to management candidate training, you're taught process, tools, documentation, contracts. But on the other hand, that's not what our clients are asking for. They're asking for real business value that comes forth from the people that we engage and that is relevant at the time that it's produced. It responds to the change at hand. And so it's this disconnect between what we are, between what we are trained to do and what we are paid to do that I think merits a lot of attention. And that's disconnect is what Agile Project Management focuses on. Now here's the caveat. We live in the real world. So it might be nice to have the fluffy bunnies and the, the let's feel, we'll have circle time and let's hold hands and feel good. About, but on the other hand, I need a contract. And there's no business without a contract. We, need, we live in the real world where we need processes to organize people. So how do we reconcile between what we are trained to do in the real world of business and what our customers want. How do we reconcile that? And so here, the, these thought leaders gave us some 12 actionable principles. 12 actionable principles. Don't write them all down. I'm just going to blast through these really quickly. But generally, the general principles are something like continuous delivery as early as possible, as often as possible. Don't make your customers wait for their satisfaction. How about face-to-face -face communication is the most effective kind of communication? We know that's the most effective kind, but the business reality is we don't have that opportunity as much. Or business and technology people have to work together every single day. The best results uh, emerge from self-organizing teams where the primary management becomes the role of a servant leader. These are some actionable principles that gave us a little bit of substance behind those values that we could start using. Okay, so it's a little bit of technical, a little bit of extra things. But mind you, these are principles. These are not mandatory checklist items. Can you be agile if you're not co-located? Sure. Can you be agile if for example, um, you have to do all of the scope. Eh, sure. The principles, not a mandatory checklist of items. 
Okay, so we have that in our minds, but then we keep hearing about all these buzzwords as scrum masters, and, and we hear about um, Kanban, and we hear about um, iterations and burn down charts, and all of these, this technical mishmash. And my advice to you is ignore it. It doesn't matter. Because every one of those techniques is simply an implementation of the principles and the values. It's all based on the manifesto. The manifesto that says that people matter more than process, documents matter more than document, uh, deliverables matter more than documentation, collaboration more than contracts, and responding to change or performing to plan, that serves as a foundation for whatever project management techniques you use, whether it's critical uh, path uh, method, whether it's, uh, whether it's the uh, risk matrix, whatever technique you use, if you use it based on these principles, you can be agile too. Okay? So forget the buzzwords. We have 12 principles based on four values. And so the next question is, okay, that agile business, what about the PIMBOK? I am a certified project manager. I have memorized the PIMBOK. In chapter three, I can tell you that the processes do not permit this kind of thing. Let's take a look at it. Everybody familiar with this? Everybody? Yeah? Yeah, everyone's like, yes. I'm much too familiar with it. Okay. These are the process groups and the PMBOK. As in project management and the discussions that you hear about it and the tools and the, and the, and the content that's offered about it, but generally focus on the middle about planning, monitoring, controlling, and executing. That's where most of the attention is drawn. Now, I happen to believe, and I've been doing some work on this, that agile principles can have a significant impact on procurement. But that's a different conversation for a different time. Most of the time, people are talking about these processes. All right. So what better way can we spend our day than to walk through all of the nine PMBOK knowledge areas? I'm sure that's exactly what you wanted to see, so let's do it. All right, integration management. On one side, we have the agile approach of release and iteration planning and iteration work, facilitation. On the traditional side, we're told to direct and manage and monitor and control our people. We're told about building development plan. And these processes, they're actually analogous. They, they, defer, less in, they defer less in what we do and they instead focus a little bit differently on how we do it. We still need project leaders. How you go about leading makes all the difference. We still need a project plan, but how you do the project plan makes all the difference. Okay? How about scope management? Scope management. I know, this, remember I said this was the boring part? This was the technical, the, 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 and I know this is exactly the best way to lose all that caffeine buzz that we just had with our tea and our coffee. But bear with me, because I want you to believe that this is possible. All right. So, on one end, we have um, we have scope definition, and on the other hand, we have a more dynamic we have a more dynamic way to go about that scope definition. And it's analogous in those sense. So, and we can talk about it whether it's um, integration management, scope management, we can talk time management, cost management, quality, human resources, communications, risk, procurement, and so on and so forth. When you, we look at all of these processes and we do a side by side comparison, we find there's really no conflict. There's no conflict in what we do. And so we have this umbrella the diagram that we create just to let you know that in my opinion, there is a big tent of project management and agile project management fits nicely within it. And there are many methods, methodologies within that, one of them being Scrum or Kanban or Extreme Program, whatever the methodology is. But they do fit nicely together. But what about how we do these things? How you go about leading your projects is just as important as what you choose to do when you go about leading them. So let's see if there's a culture difference between what the PIMBOK says and what the Agile Manifesto says. All right, so the stereotype is, um, you know, I, <laughs> I'm learning these phrases here. These are Chai Vai, Pani Vani, Agile Fragile. All right, that's, that's what you say. Ah, it's just not, not worth, it's not rigorous. 
But if you look at the manifesto a little bit closely, it says that technical people do not get to go off in an ivory tower and spend all their time deep, de dictating that Agile is all about engineering and it's all about the technical people. No, you actually need the domain knowledge and the domain specialists involved. In fact, um, I've heard a number of talks over the last day and a half about how domain knowledge is one of the key indicators of a successful project manager. If you don't have it when you begin, you find ways to get access to that domain knowledge. The Agile Manifesto says that, just yes, you need talented people, but talent is not enough. It's not about the senior people only. It's not about the geniuses that we hire. It's about taking the time to reflect on what we are doing and then adjust our behavior accordingly. Um, how many of you have ever been in a lessons learned meeting? Come on, your project managers. A little bit of interactive collaboration. Okay. Now, what do we call this lessons learned meeting? A post-mortem, right? We do it at the end of the project because we're already dead. <laughs> what, if, what if instead we held our lessons learned meeting right now? What if instead of learning the lessons and then getting better later, we learned our lessons we got better right now? And we applied that knowledge right now so we can deliver better value to our customers right now. That's what the Agile Manifesto says. It's not about being fragile with having only senior level resources and not trusting other people. And then furthermore, the Manifesto says, although there is value in the management controls, we value the value generators and the value producers a little bit more. That is to say, we don't say throw away your documents, throw away your plans, throw away your contracts and throw away your tools. No, 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 no. Keep them, use them, but use them in such a way where you're focusing instead on the bottom line. The bottom line is not performing to plan. The bottom line is happy customers. So it's not a totally fragile in the sense of the, what the stereotype says. Here's another stereotype that my Agile colleagues tell me, oh, pff, why are you going to that conference? You know, those, those PMPs, they're all bureaucrats. They don't understand people. They don't understand, um, uh, they don't understand flexibility and adaptability. Oh, well, okay, let me introduce you to the appendix in the fourth edition of the, the PMBOK called Leadership Soft Skills. It focuses a lot on what a project manager needs to do with people. Let me also show you that um, there are three types of project phases. Yes, there's the um, sequential of the waterfall and then there are the overlapping phases that we have in rational unified process methodology or then there's also the iterative. Furthermore, the entire project management plan is iterative and goes through progressive elaboration. Progressive elaboration is college's word for agile. Okay? And then, what about this? How about all of the individual processes themselves? They are not, if this, then that, do this later, followed by that. No, it's iterative. Sometimes you're updating your project plan every day to reflect the latest reality. So the stereotypes don't, 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 don't fit as nicely as we think. So there's, no, there's not so much the, the conflict in the culture that we've been led to believe. Okay, I trust everyone's still awake and energized because now I'm going to ask you a question. So what? That's nice. You know, we have a nice American who's come to India and he speaks with a lot of energy. And okay, I'm going to go back to my real job and do my real project management. That's all right. I want to talk to you about I want to talk about the so what. And, it's, and it has to do with the three most important agile techniques there are. I've given you a number of techniques, uh, or <laughs> rather I've sped through them. You can talk to me later if you want more detail. But I've sped through a number of things and there's only three techniques that you need to care about. And those three techniques, I think, tap into the Indian advantage. Let's take a look at what these three techniques. First, number one, empower your teams. 
empower your teams. As project managers, we're given, uh, what happens is this, the, um, uh, the customer, uh, we do a proposal, and the sales team, they, they put together a bid, and then, and, then, um, and then they cut it in half in order to make the sale, and then they give it to you. Congratulations. We won the bid. I'm going to go golfing. You get to fix this project. So you're landed with something that is, all right, so when that happens to you, I'm going to teach you a new word. It's a good word, and it's a word that might be relevant in that situation, and it goes something like this. No. Oh, come on, all together, come on, all together now. We can do this, we can do this. All, okay, ready? No. Uh, now, that, that's fun and that's games, but then my manager will sack me. But, so instead, what I've learned in Asia, in India and in China in particular, we understand proper respect and, and proper humility to our customers and our managers. So we don't say this word. Instead, we say something else. We say, yes, but. Okay, so when you go back to your teams, you can encourage them to engage in a little bit of uh, new English and a new language, even when they talk to you. Okay, uh, Indian example. Vineet Nayar from HCL Technologies has written a bestseller, Employees First, Customer Second. Now, the project managers in the, in the, in the, uh, in the services sector, they're like, is, is he still in business? <laughs> Actually, his company was becoming less competitive and he implemented these policies and now they're the fastest growing IT services company in all of India. So radical things like having your 360 degree feedback become visible so that everyone knows what everyone thinks about the manager. Although anonymous feedback, but still, and then let's open up a trouble ticket center where anyone who has a problem with finance or, um, or, or with human resources or with the PMO can open a help ticket and then you are graded on how quickly you close that ticket for that team. Reversing the org chart, turning the accountability upside down, and it's made him the most successful Indian IT services company right now. Fascinating. Okay, but as project managers, I know we can't change our org structure. You know, there are some CEOs here and we're glad to have them. So what can you do? This is one of my teams. We are at the end of a, uh, we're at the end of a project phase. That is an empowered junior tester who exerted influence on the entire team. And meanwhile, the project manager is sitting back just saying, uh, Okay, that's covered. I have to go tell the senior management about the, this problem and that problem. So it freed the manager to lead up. It was a quite a powerful thing. Technique number two, deliver early and often. Don't make your customers wait because as you can see, God does not make you wait on oxygen. Every year a new increment of tree is released into the world and we get to benefit from that increment of tree rather than waiting 50 years for the full completion of that scope. I get to enjoy the benefits of that scope early and often. Because today, traditionally what we've, what we've seen is that we have to wait the full duration before we release something and then we have a patch. Right? Right? But if I choose instead to deliver value early and often, I do the highest risk, highest value items first, and then again, and then again, and then again, until finally the only scope remaining is the lowest value, lowest risk. And I become the greatest project manager of all time because I have mitigated my project risk, not with a matrix, not with a risk register, I mitigated my project risk with delivery. Thank you very much. 
And I believe that with the talent pool that India has access to, and with the, in growing, uh, with the growing reliance that the West has, there is a greater need and, and a greater ability to become more agile when we talk about mobile, when we talk about cloud computing, when we talk about gaming. There's an Indian advantage here that's only just now beginning to surface. And I think, I think I would like to challenge you to continue that momentum. Third technique, inspect and adapt. This is, this is not, this is, this is what generally people think of when they think of agility. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. Okay, it all started with the scientific method, Al-Hazan. Al-Hazan, from the, uh, who's an Egyptian who lived in the Middle East, who invented, many say, the first structure of the scientific method, which is, I have an idea, I'm going to do an experiment, I'm going to observe the results and then make some conclusions. So, I have an idea, take my scope, slice it into phases, I'm going to do an experiment, do one thing right now, observe the results, happy customer, make some conclusions, do it again. And then what we saw with that is it became formalized in modern management by Edwards Deming. He called it the plan, do, check, act cycle. So now in modern management, we have this premise of the scientific method being placed into how we do run our businesses. And then, then we also hear about it with Kaizen, which all of you know because it was on the PMP exam. But Indians, I think, know it by a different word. And my, 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 uh, my thanks and, or, and apologies to Professor Pradeep uh, Padse who mentioned this in the last session. But I think Indians understand, uh, because he mentioned it also, but I think Indians understand process improvement, inspect and adapt by a different word. <laughs> usually, it's fun in games. It's a good movie, actually. It's pretty funny. But usually we think of this, right? It's like, uh, you know, this is the Jugad that we know. Do you think there's a design document for this? <laughs> Is it delivering business value to the driver? Okay. How about this one? This is a, this is a bit, uh, this is a jugad as well. It completely broke the rules. This is the Tata Nano. And Tata came up and said, uh, okay, how can, we, how can we compete? How can we get to that fortune at the bottom of the pyramid? The fortune at the bottom of the pyramid is another business uh, book that, that, reve that, that revealed that there's an entire market that is Indians we're just now beginning to explore because traditionally we've been told automobiles only appeal to affluent customers. Okay, well, what if we could get to the one lakh wonder? How would that work? How can we do that? Completely transform the way we go about building an automobile, completely transform the way that we go about um, designing it. This is the one we know, right? So, uh, uh, you know, we, we go into the bus. Uh, this, a bus is only designed to hold so many people. Do you think these people are compliant with the design specifications? <laughs> right? I don't think so. How about this boy? This boy is a senior staff member. He's a senior innovator. I want him on my team. You take a bunch of potatoes and you put it on there, right? And you go. Or this one. Take a look. You'll figure it out. Yeah, I'm going to take, uh, what's the best tool to repair a vehicle? A blowtorch. And then let's talk about that market again, because our, 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 our services and our products are only supposed to appeal to affluent customers, except, except, what if we change things? And so we see more and more um, that we're starting to put some mobile phones into the hands of the Dolby Ballot. 
how can you afford to do this? They don't have the kind of income to make that happen. Well, if all incoming calls are free, then the customer is happy because he can make a phone call to the Dobivala and get access to him. Dobivala is happy because he does not pay for anything but has access to his customers. And the cell phone company is happy because more phone calls. Everybody wins by adapting to the business plan. The business plan here says only affluent, only affluent. When we talk about project innovation, really we're talking about Jugad, right? Okay, here's some examples. Here's some real world examples. Your projector doesn't work in the conference room. What do you do? You find out that the plug is broken, you go get another plug, put it in, put it in, there. Meeting, conference room meeting, thank you very much. And you keep going. So this project manager, he says, I see a problem, and then I ask myself a question. I ask myself a question, am I a Dugati? And so I ask you, all of you, when you go back to the office, Kya tum Dugati ho? That's right. Ye gora Hindi bote. How about some more examples? Because me jugari won. I saw this in another conference room. Every time the conference, uh, the whiteboard doors opened, they would close. And then you open them and then they would close. And they open them. Okay, how about this? Let's put some paper and stick it there. Now we can have our meeting. Okay, here's another one. <laughs> here's another one. Project team is told, uh, no conference rooms. No conference rooms. Where can you have your status meeting? Uh, cafe coffee day. And so we have our ca meeting cafe coffee day. In this case, this is one of my classes. And I'm telling people, your offices have been shifted. Project team, analysts in A block, engineers in B block, testers in C block. You may now collaborate with no conference space. So they went to the hotel lobby. Jugad. Jugad is mentioned in the book, the best-selling management book, India Way, as one of the single most important elements of why the Indian economy has exploded. We're talking about why this matters now. Since the deregulation in 1991 of the Indian markets, there's been steady and consistent growth along the way. And there are four key factors that they cite. Um, a holistic engagement with employees is one of them. Um, we talk about uh, finding innovative new uh, value propositions at the bottom of the pyramid. But the key thing that I enjoyed most reading was adapting and improvisation. Juga. This is not, this is, this is the kind of project innovation that we need to deliver for our customers. Because here's what's happening. Remember that graph? That graph was a graph during a pre, uh, that was generated by Hans Rosling. Hans Rosling did a, is a, sta, a Swedish statistician who did a presentation at the Technology Engineering Design Conference in, in India last year. And he said, okay, that was Japan. Remember you saw that skyrocket up of Japan? Look at the bottom. Now I want to track India and China. And ever since deregulation, those numbers have been going way up, way fast. You want to know where those numbers are going? He says that the average income of an Indian and the average income of a Chinaman will surpass that of the average income of a Brit or an American by 2048 because of Jugad. This is the Indian advantage. And you're seeing Indian companies all around you right now are tapping into the power of their people and empowering them. Indian companies who understand that Westerners are no longer interested in the full definition of scope but want to go to market right now and deliver early and often. Companies who understand that their, their innate innovative talent is right here. And all you have to do is let it out and unleash it and become competitive and become the most affluent country in the world.
That's what matters. So how do you get started? Now that you know that this isn't just another technique, now that you know that this isn't just another methodology, how do I learn these, how do I learn, how do I learn to become a Jugadi? How do I learn to become an agile project manager? And there's three keys, there's three steps. One, get connected, get trained, and get going. Get connected. There are many specialty, specialty associations out there, Agile Alliance, Scrum Alliance, APLN, that offer you membership. You can get access to content. And then there are some um, specialty associations right here in India, pan-Indian associations, like the Agile Software Community of India or the Scrum, uh, the Scrum uh, Enthusiast Community of India. And these are pan-Indian organizations. And then also, in your own local areas, there are a body of practitioners, your colleagues, at your PMI chapters, your colleagues in your cities that are doing this, that you can meet and talk to. But if all of you are paying PMI members in good standing, you can log into PMI.org right now for free and get access to global experts and fantastic content on how to understand this right now. Get connected with other people and other practitioners right now. And then you can start looking at what training does, uh, should I look into? What training matters to me? In PMI Seminars World, there's only one Agile Project Management Seminar that's offered um, at the different cities that it's being placed. It's Agile Project Management. It's consistently sold out. It's the single most popular session each and every time. And there's a reason for it. These people understand, I need to be competitive. I need to be the superhero project manager. And so I'm going to go out and get that training. Also, your chapters are offering one-day workshops, two-day workshops on a regular basis on Agile project management. I've been talking to, uh, to the pre uh, presidents and uh, the vice presidents of professional development right here at this conference, and they're saying, Jesse, let's talk about who are the people that we want to bring in to hold these sessions, and when can we bring them, and when can we have them? So I would encourage you to talk to your PMI chapters. And then also, the Scrum Alliance offers the only certified um, Agile training in the world. Um, and, and you can talk to me more about that. And then finally, get going. I have a question for you. When it comes to delivering early and often, empowering your teams, inspecting, adapting, when it comes to those three critical agile techniques, what is the one simplest, easiest, cheapest thing you can do starting Monday that will have the most impact on your projects? One small experiment. I am like the scientific method of Al Hazan. One small idea, an experiment, and an observation. Just one thing. Maybe it's a daily stand up meeting. Maybe it's asking the team, team, what's the best way to solve this problem? Because although I have the 15 years of experience, you're the ones doing the work. What is the one smallest, easiest, cheapest, simplest thing you can do that will have the most amount of impact? And that's what it means to be an Agile project manager. And that's what I'm hoping that you will be when you get out of here. Thank you for your time.